Okay guys, so now uh, a <clears throat> guide on the Avery, which will be stage 4. Uh, now it's pretty much the same idea if you watch the, the guide on Adam. It's pretty much the same idea. You want to have that I3, you want to have have weapons, have weapon expert level 3. And uh, if you're using the Harbinger, you want to use these two. And uh, you see, I have Gunslinger again. So I mean, okay, guys. So this is the. Um, just gonna add this as well. Um, this is pretty much the ultimate sort of safe loadout for any map, for that matter, like any map, any boss fight, you name it. This is the pretty much the safest. If you just want to like make sh absolute sure you're not worried about killing them as fast as you can you just want to survive and you know do it in in time without dying then i will recommend this loadout for pretty much every map you can imagine now which is speedy g th these are the the safe boosters so to speak speedy g quick healer um steadfast and um enhanced radar now some apps i don't think you need radar so maybe you can even use um, this which is I don't draw so because people will die a lot for those little hits the melee hits out of nowhere Or you if you're on solo, maybe whatever you want to use harden so you can hit your shots better But harden I mean that's not really gonna help you survive, you know This would probably if you want to be like super safe make sure you're gonna you're not gonna die and give you as give yourself as many chances as you can you will use these kind of boosters now this is useful more on stage 8 because of the china leak on the boss but uh so on other stages uh, it's not that necessary it does help i mean rpgs like i i just said on the avery guy the um the teleport the explosions anything this i mean you're also not getting stunned if you have level 2 one so that helps a ton but uh just in case you don't want to use this maybe you, you want to use radar as well and remember you can also just use level 2 here maybe even level 1 it's not really necessary that you have all the way up to 3 on speedy but uh, so I mean 2 is good and uh, if you want to use uh, gear master 3 so you can like I teach you on many of the guides or the maps you want to have the mines at your disposal so again you can be extra safe you would probably throw that in there and uh, at this point maybe this which is iron jaw or maybe radar depending on the map you know and you can kind of adjust but uh this this right now is pretty much the ultimate it's safe this is you're gonna be healing fast you're not gonna be dying you're gonna be able to move fast so you get out of of you know of fire really fast as well i mean this you can have the mines grenades at your disposal which also helps a ton. This you can see them, so I don't know, maybe they're not rushing you from behind, whatever. If you know where they're coming and you don't think you're ra don't think you need a radar, you can use this for any any surprise case where they don't know, maybe they're behind you, they mail you and you, instead of dying, this is gonna keep you alive. But uh and uh, again remember you can even use level one here if you want. It's not really necessary. And uh, steady fast for maps that have a lot of like RPGs, a lot of like China Lakes, those kind of things, explosions. This this is gonna do wonders for you. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the the ultimate safe loadout. I mean, if you really want to just win, you know, not die, and you you're not worried about getting what 10 minutes, 11 minutes, or something. You just want to get the stars. Make sure you don't die. Because most of the maps, I mean, as long as you don't die, like, at any point, you will, you would do it in time to get the stars, so. I would recommend this. Speedy, the main ones are Speedy G, Gear Master for the Mines, um, Quick Healer, and yeah, Speedy G. But, uh, maybe if, if, if you want to use level 2, I mean, it's not all that bad. You don't really also need, this is just going to give you, like, a ton of gear if you have level 3. But I mean, level two is just fine. Maybe one, up to you. You know, I'll let you play around. But just know that the the these are the mains, like the main, like safe 
uh, boosters you want to have to that will pretty much guarantee that you you know won't stay alive but you know make things a lot easier not necessarily faster but definitely easier and uh, yeah see just a bunch of examples here I'm showing you but uh play around with it see what works best for you I mean I'm not gonna tell you to use a specific one I'd rather just tell you what makes the difference and let you choose based on what works best for you so yeah I'm gonna pretty much put this on every guide I guess as everyone should know this and uh, that's it I mean, yeah, if you haven't checked the uh, the other guy on, on Adam, I mean, I, I recommend that you do. Because it's kind of also complementary to this one, so I don't have to, you know, say the same thing twice. <coughs> so, uh, it's the same idea that I taught you in the, the Adam. Adam, you want, if you have solo or three people, you want to shoot with the harbinger, if you're using the harbinger. One shot to the body and the second following shot to the head. That's how you do the max possible damage. And if you're if you're alone, the NPC is not around you, then you do two headshots with the harbinger. Uh, now, I mean, for Adam, yeah, let me get to to him before I I explain everything. Now, what the only things that are really complementary from what I said, from Adam to Avery, is the damage. It's really the same, the same caps, which is nine thousand five hundred solo and seven thousand, about seven thousand with three people. You can get to those damage using the harbinger. You can do the uh, shoot the pistol and then Mazur like I showed you on Adam. If you maybe you don't have the uh, you know the harbinger, you can do the major instead. So yeah, I mean, make sure you guys you if you have if you're watching this video and you have not watched the Adam the Adam guide, make sure you do that because it's pretty much all complementary. So I don't I don't even have to repeat the whole thing again. Make the video very long. So. I'm just gonna get to the boss. I'm gonna skip this. I'm gonna go to the. I'm gonna get to Avery and I'll show you what to do then. And uh, yeah, keep in mind this is all I'm crushing, so. We'll, we'll work the same on the difficulties, but I'm, I'm showing you on crushing what to do. And yeah, let's get to the boss. Okay, guys, so we're at the boss. Now this weapon right here the that you get from killing the brute on the siege this is really powerful against the boss but uh i'm gonna have to suicide to demonstrate you so we see that it's, the counter is, is going down i'm going to suicide it before the boss spawns because this is going to save you about 15 seconds almost 20 seconds because when the cutscene is, is going on of him spawning and you're losing time so he's gonna spawn and you want to what you want to do is to nades so you kill the, the first key points right away and now you have two two pistols to use already and you would you know you would shoot him now you see that there spawns also a brute so you want to have an injurious eternity for that so you throw him and it make, make it really easy to kill him and fast. So you use that already. And you can also use this on the boss which is really powerful. I think you're forgetting headshots. Also if you have weapon X for level 4 is going to put the damage on it. It's also a really good weapon to do the deep point with. You see the dead already. It's really powerful. So make sure you use that if you can. I mean, just on the bus itself, you know, a lot of damage. You see, so in like 30 seconds, I already have four pistols. 
I was really trying, that was gonna be like half of his health gone already, or more. Also, on Avery, if you get too close, he does this move. That's that's his melee move. Is he will try to stomp you. And of course, after he takes a certain a certain threshold of damage, he's either going to try to teleport on you, or he's going to do this this animation where he he captures you. Now. So yeah, you want to kill that, that brood as soon as you can, when he spawns using the injure, it's going to make it really easy. You don't need the injure, but it's just going to make it really easy and safe. Now chokers, you also want to kill chokers as soon as they show up, because they're, they're going to get you killed. Now, you see here I'm doing the wall trick, that I touch you on, on other guys. Make sure you watch that as well, so you know what I'm talking about. And uh, you can also, because like I said, this war trick works on everyone. So you you would want to use that with not only him, but also the decoys. So I'm just doing the wall trick while I'm shooting the decoys. So they can't cannot hit me, and I'm invincible. Also, you see he's doing the teleport move. I see him right here. No, but uh, you see he was doing the teleport move where he he only does that move where he does a lot of teleports right after the other he only does that once he hits half health or less and uh, once that happens when he's mid health below mid health the, the decoys are going to start teleporting like you just saw right now and if you stay on that teleport he's going to kill you in one hit that's a one hit kill if he teleports on top of you any of them, the decoy or the boss so if you see that you want to move right away And uh, yeah, the difference about him, Avery and Adam is that on Adam he's teleporting all over the place, so you can't really do much damage to him without him being vulnerable. But with this boss, you can, because he, you know, he's pretty easy shot like any other enemy. Also, you can also you see him using nades, but you, if you have China League, maybe you, you don't want to use the Harbinger. If you have China League, I mean. The RPG, those weapons, they all work. Maybe even any weapon where you have a weapon. Because you want to kill the decoys as fast as you can. So you can use the, the pistol on the boss. The flint lock. Now, I'm, I'm playing on solo, so it's a lot easier. You see that? You, you, you can also do the wall trick on the brutes. Then you don't really even need the, the injure, because you can kill him just as fast without taking damage. If you have three people and you're not the host, but uh, but I mean danger just makes it that much easier. And uh, yeah, you see, you would do something like this. You get to the, the wall, or the wall trick you shoot. Also, just like on Adam, you can dodge. You see how it just dodges bullet by rolling. It missed it. You can also dodge it if you roll on the. When you know if, if you know he's about to shoot you when you roll, he's gonna miss the shot. You take no damage from that, or at the very least, you're gonna take less damage. So I mean, yeah, what you want to do while he's the best thing you can do while he's not vulnerable is either to kill the decoys really fast so you can get the pistol, and uh, or you can just keep damaging him like maybe like this with the harbinger. You see that does a lot, quite a lot of damage because I'm using. The, and weapon expert level 3, which gives me 20% damage. Also good to kill the, the decoys. If you're using any, I mean, I'm using the harbinger, but any, really any heavy weapon would be good for that. A shotgun, the condor, maybe the, the that US shotgun. Any, any heavy weapon is good to kill those guys. You see, he doesn't move if you get close. Now, if you're using the Harbinger, you need to do the kind of swapping trick that I taught you on Adam. You know, see I'm dragging the both weapons. You want to do this, and once you get an angle, shoot him, switch to the Harbinger and, and finish with the, uh, you know, with the, shoot him with the pistol and finish him with the Harbinger when he's vulnerable.
You can also kind of go like this. He, he can't really hit me, but I, I can hit him. You see, also nades. You see, he gets stunned for a bit. You can also use this to your advantage. I'll show you in a second. Because you can combine that with the with the danger. You see, when when he's he has more than half health, he just gotta do one teleport. He only does those those teleports where it's a lot in a row, many teleports in a row. Once he hits the half health or less, because then he he enters like this rage mode. And that's why he does that. Yeah, you can actually tell when he's in rage mode because he he kind of does a little pose, so to speak. Now grenades are also very powerful to kill the the decoys and also damage the boss. Now I'll show you that the other thing you can do with the injury is use it when he's spawning the decoys. He does this animation, you see his arm is raising. When he does that, it's because he's summoning the he's about to summon the uh, the decoys. <laughs> now you, you can show a ninja during that period of time. He's gonna he's gonna be slow for a very long time. I'm gonna show you. Yeah, he's part of it for see how slow he is for, for a few while. You can also throw nades do whatever you want at that time to kill the, the decoys. And also remember you see if you're rolling you can dodge the bullets. See if I can get a better demonstration of that. He spawned on a really bad angle there. You see how long it takes? During this time you control the nades and then they're gonna be stunned like this. It's pretty easy shot to finish them off. They're gonna try to run away, you can still be shooting them. Or you can just use the injury for the uh, the boots. But if you're doing the wall trick like this, you see he dies just as fast. Also on the boss itself, I mean, he's gonna stay still like that shooting you. And you can just kinda headshot him. As much as you like. I mean, I'm the host so I'm taking damage but... <clears throat> like I explained, if you're not the host of the wall trick, you're not gonna do take any damage from that. And uh, yeah, again, you want to do the. Uh, you see, once you, you start doing raising the arm, you want to throw nades right away, so you can kill the decoys as soon as they spawn. Because as soon as you kill them, you already have two uh, the pistols at your disposal, so you can get them vulnerable and deal max damage. Now it's pretty much the same thing, you want to do one shot to the body and, and one to the head when he's vulnerable with, if you're using a harbinger. See this quite a lot of damage even though he's not vulnerable, especially if you're headshotting. So you raise the arm, he's gonna summon it. Okay, so you see, if you stay in this teleport, it's a one hit kill, you die right away. Now, another thing you can do is kind of, you can kind of combine the injure with the nades. So, like, you stun him, then you stun him again. You see, not only is it slow, you see, but also the stun takes longer because it is inside the injure. So if you have seven nades, you can keep keep him like this, like this, for a very long time, you know. Until you throw all those seven nades, he's gonna be at least like ten seconds inside the injury, and those that's the animation. To which, if you have three other people, I mean two other people in the game, you can all be shooting him at this point. So he will take a lot of damage. Right? And 
the brood is the, the most dangerous guy, so forget the boss and always kill him first, as well as the, the chokers. Now, any, yeah, I mean, there's, there's almost everything you need to be aware of. You can dodge the bullets for both the boss and the, uh, and the, the decoys. You see, if I have a bad angle like this, then just do three shots to the body with the harbinger. Still gonna do quite a lot of damage. I mean, be careful because sometimes you're zooming in like I was right there. And you can you, you kind of can't see you cannot see the the indication that the teleport is going to happen. So you see, he likes to stay still, looking like shit like that. You see, you see this this animation he just did there. That's when you know he's in his rage mode, and he's gonna start doing the, the teleports in a row like this. No, he only he only does the he only does that the, that rage mode animation once. He only gives it one indication, but just so you know. But really, all you have to know is that once he hits mid health, he's going to start doing this. And, and see why you want to kill the choker? That's why. Kill him as soon as you see him. But yeah, that's what you want to do. Kill the decoys. Get the pistol. Shoot him. Body. And head. See how much damage, how much health he lost already? If you have a bad angle, just do three to the body, no problem. The same thing I said for Avery, throwing the injury on him while he's vulnerable is not going to increase the time. It's going to make him slower, but it's not going to increase the time that he stays vulnerable for. Now, the last thing I can show you is if you do not have the Harbinger, the best thing you can do to, which would be almost the same as if you had the Harbinger. Just which is you want would, would, would want to use the Mazur, which is a heavy, high damage weapon, highest damage weapon. Same thing I said for Avery, he's always going to be following you, so you can get him in, instead of staying still where you get surrounded by so many enemies, you can keep moving and he's always going to be following you with the teleports. You see like that? He's always going to be following me and the, uh, the enemies are going to be always, you know, wait, wait for the behind to shoot me. You can just keep doing it as you run, find a position, shoot him. And when the enemies, when you get surrounded by too many enemies, move again, and he, he's gonna keep following you. Same thing for the decoys. Okay, so he captured me. Let me see if I can demonstrate what to do with the missile. This is if he's vulnerable. If you had just shot him with the flint lock, or if he, he captures like this. You start with the pistol, and then you finish with the with the Mazur headshot. That will do a lot of damage as well. I mean, ideally, you want to get the headshot, but you get the point. I mean, if you want, you can just use a normal weapon as well. No, don't need to do all this. Just get him vulnerable and get close to him and shoot him times he wants to the head.
Now, as far as the enemy goes, guys, as soon as, like I said, you want to kill the the chokers and the uh, the brute as fast as possible. And the only really second problem you have is the sniper enemy. Sometimes there are enemies with the small enemies like this with the sniper. They can be a problem as well. But if you if you keep moving, usually you're always moving because he he always captures you and changes location. They they are always really almost always way too further behind to shoot you but anyway keep aware that the, the dangerous enemies are the brutes the choker and the snipers and there's also one guy that uses one enemy that uses the shotgun but as long as you're not close to him he can really do anything to you Now one thing you can do is just stay here if you want, they can't kill you here, you see they're missing even their explosives, and you can shoot him back if you wish with the uh, pistol. Maybe you wanted to cover your life. You can also do the same thing on this side of the map right here. Where you stay here. Like if you stay here, no one can shoot you at all. And I mean, one person could stay here, and uh, the other two persons stay like somewhere around here. And because they, well, while they're like standing, trying to find a way to shoot you, the other guys can be shooting him. So you see, they're kind of stuck. They can't do anything. And you can still shoot back. Hey guys, so just a lot of details, a few other details on the boss. Um, in, in case you don't suicide at the start, like I said, to skip the cutscene, you should definitely use the, uh, the big gun that the brute drops when you kill him on siege. That's really powerful on the, uh, the boss and also especially on the depots. Now, another thing you can do with the injure besides um, hitting the brute to kill him faster if maybe if you have another player that has the injury well, you can throw the injury when Let's he's summoning the decoys practice. like that you see it makes them all really slow i mean you should definitely be faster than this but um because i'm solo it's a little harder to do this faster uh, these three people i mean everyone could watch one side and and depending on where he spawns, you control the injury then. Remember, but it makes it really easy to, to kill the decoys there. when you they have a... Uh, the so you can look at Danny control, see how slow they are? Then he gets done, look at this. It's 
opportunity. It's a really, really good sort of way. You can do this in Ranger. And, and you remember you can also repeat this, so you see I just do, did it once. Now as soon as he summons, summons them again, I can repeat the same process. Just keep an eye on him. He does a, a specific thing that he's about to summon. Like that. That's the movement he does when he raises his arms like that. That's when he's gonna summon the two D players. Now that's gonna be two again for me. Two D players didn't even get one shot at me and they're dead already. So yeah, I mean you just really need one grenade and that's gonna keep them inside the engine for you know far enough time for you to uh, them. Now you see the damage there as he captured me. You can do a. Uh, I'm using heavy weapons, uh, expert three, and also dead eye three. So you can shoot the uh, the body of the head like I just did there. Does a pretty chunk of damage. Or you could just do. Um, Oh, just one one thing. You see, this is the use of Speedy G because he has, he's always teleporting. I mean, the reason most people die is let's just say I want to get there. So without Speedy G, I'm running straight like this, and he's shooting me while I'm running there. So you see, I got hit pretty fast, and he got one shot at me. So, but without Speedy G, he would probably get three or two shots on me before I could get there, which is kind of enough to kill you. So this is where um, Speedy G really comes in hand, is when you're just traversing the map like this without getting shot to the point of dying. And uh, I mean, yes, you can use the coverage I mean, while you're running, but because he's always teleporting, I mean, it doesn't always work. You ready to shut up yet? Sometimes you... Uh, yeah, you see one side of the head is too much, he gets up. So we just one to the body, one to the uh, head. Just like on stage two Adam. Now, like I was saying, you can also like go in, be going into cover and stuff as you're traversing the map, not to get shot. But still, this map is not too bad, but especially maps like New Death and stuff like that. I mean, there's like almost no cover near, and the, there's a really long pass you need to, to see like right now I just almost died because they teleport and if I don't have speedy G to do this and just go to safety really fast usually people die a lot because of this so just keep in mind that's where uh, speedy G kind of really ahead on the way up to use it on the uh, third box side you see right now speedy G just saved me as well from the explosion and you just saw what I mean, they just kind of instantly kill me. Let's try that, again, shall we? That, that can also happen while you're running around the map like this, trying to just escape them. Oh, danger also works for him, you see, he gets really slow as well, and he got a lot of shots in him. And uh, I already mentioned it, but the grenades and the heavy weapons are the best. You see just two shots for the best weapon, the best way to kill the destroyer fast. And then you can just use the, the pistol right away. Body head. And you can also do... Yeah, this You can also do maybe two shots to the, uh, in the body and one in the head. Oh, I don't have this the harbinger. Great. Um, So 
Dude, this is a good example right there. Scooby G just totally saved me there. I was really too well. So we are already fast enough to be able to kill me and to cover. So you see two shots in the body is still not enough damage. So the, the highest possible I mean, damage you can do is uh, two shots to the body and followed by one to the head. Let's see if he uh, captures me and I'll talk to him and I'll show you how And also I'll show you another thing you don't want to do. Oh, by the way, this explosion that he does with the teleport. If you have a steady fast 2 on your loadout, or maybe just even one, just the booster itself, it's not going to kill you right away because it reduces the, the damage. That, that is considered an explosion. So if you have steady fast, this thing right here will not kill you. The explosion. The teleport. So again, yeah, it's also just like CD G, just really helps you with the. Uh, Stay alive and winning with your big boss. So when he teleports you like this, the best thing you can do is two to the body and one to the head. Like one, two, three. See so that's the kind of damage. You do this about three times, he's pretty much dead. Three, four. And uh, yeah, so that's the max damage with the hard moves. Two to the body and one to the head. Also, while he, you're running away from him, you can also just get Harbinger and just keep shooting like this because it does a lot of damage to him, especially if you have a uh, heavy weapon expert. It does a lot of damage, even though he's not vulnerable, it's still a lot of damage. So just for uh, the same thing for the decoys, I mean, the, you just want to run around with the Harbinger, you, you have enough money. Just keep on like, buying them and you can show him. You see that the uh, Harbinger is yeah, inside the uh, decoy that teleported right on top of him. That's another mistake that see people do a lot. It's, uh, you see Steady Fast would have saved me there as well. Because I would not have been stunned from the Don't explosion. But um... I see a lot of people doing this. And, um, let me see if I can get him to capture me. And I'll... Right away. But uh, when he catches you, you don't want to stay like right on top of him when you're shooting. Because usually the enemies, sometimes even the brute itself, especially when you're Devon, but um, maybe to this map, they, the decoys, mainly the decoys, they, they like to teleport like right on top of him, some sort of a, a shield. But if you're near, they're going to stop you with, where, you know, when they hit the ground. Let me see if I can do the move for you. See, like this, this time you gotta get good now with the hand. And the decoys are gonna do that on you. And it's like, it's, if you don't have steady fast, steady fast also affects that, the stop there. Because it's also considered an explosion, just like the teleport. But, um... It makes it so. Where you been all my life? Yeah, so steady fast makes it so you, you don't die instantly. But um, oh, anything is just kind of just really explosive. Steady fast is gonna have an effect on. And you also, you see there, three shots to the body is also a pretty good option if you don't have a good angle for to keep the hand. Still does quite a lot of damage. Now, yeah, okay, so he's gonna catch me, I can demonstrate. The, not just the decoy, but Avery himself, sometimes when he gets up, he will do the stomp on you. So I just say, he grabs you like this, right? You do not want to do this, where you're right on top of him and shooting. You do not want to do this. You see, he got up, and you see how the bridge is already close? Sometimes he, he like, literally teleports on top of you, so he might even melee you at that point. Now, at, at that occasion, Avery chooses to teleport away. But often, when he gets up from the have, from taking the max damage, he um, he immediately does the stomp on you, and you barely have any reaction time to that. So it's really dangerous to stay like right on top of him. Too.
first thing you want to do is just create some distance and then you start to and you need to depend, depending where you are like let's just say he captured me here I'm not only creating distance but I'm also moving as I'm moving and uh, so I can get the cover faster uh, you see sometimes he goes back to he teleports and he stumps you right away so the speedy G would also help on that because you're always moving and you're moving fast also just like on Adam like I said where he's always following you so you can pretty much by your position dictate where he goes so what you want to do is just keep moving find a position to do the wall trick and then wait for him to teleport you know like that and then you shoot him the deep as well and like just keep shooting them until they die now you see now I'm getting surrounded so I just move away I'll find another location and I wait for him to teleport because he's always going to be following you so you're, you're at the advantage here you see that I can keep getting easy shots of him until he captures me or maybe I just use the, the flit lock but yeah so that's why you, you always want to keep moving like that because uh, if you get surrounded <clears throat> especially in a tight spot that's when you die also you can throw the explosion first, it also works like I did that. It's either dead already. I mean same thing works if you have the flint lock, for example right here. I could just wait around here and he's gonna come sooner or later. You see like that and I don't even really see and then I shoot him. You don't really need to go to him, he's always gonna be going to you. So knowing that, just get the best position you can and wait for him. Where you been all my life? You guys see the boot is, is way too dangerous to leave alive. So you need to kill him as soon as possible. Also, as soon as you kill him, use the weapon there against the boss, the decoys. Extremely powerful. Especially if you're headshotting with them. <coughs> so, like I was saying here, you see, I created distance and now I'm going to start shooting. You see the decoys teleport right on top of him? If I was there, I would be dead for sure. They, both of them would do the stomp on me, and it would be an instant kill for me. So create distance and then you shoot. Now, this is the one I mean. This is weapon you want to use. Cooking. As soon as you kill the brute, you want to use this. See, it's like, it's like extremely powerful. Look at how much damage it's taking now. Especially if you do headshots, it's crazy. You die. And heavy weapon. I still Also, you see a turning grenade there. If you do that, it stops the, the teleport. If he does the teleports in a se sequence, he does about five of them. Like one, two, three, four, five. If you throw a grenade and it hits him, he's gonna snap out of it and stop teleporting. You can see right now, one, two, three, four. I think it's five. No, yeah, maybe four. But uh, if you throw a grenade and it hits him there, he's gonna stop. Maybe on the second, the first, doesn't matter. As soon as he hits him, he's gonna stop doing the following teleports. And uh, the safe slot I, I, I told you is also for these kinds of situations. Maybe the, the hunter grabs you and stuff like that. You can get away fast enough, not die. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, 
he, he has the Bring same uh, 9000 that I got the, uh, on Adam on stage 2. And it's more on New Devon that's different, but I'll do a, a guide for that. And uh, yeah, that's it. Pretty much how you kill this this boss, guys. Pretty easy. And uh, make sure you like the video if it helps you. Um, if you want to subscribe to get a notification on the following, the future guys. I'm still, the next one is going to be the, uh, the Brutes on stage 6 and 8. And uh, finally I'll do on stage 10, the two bosses there. So yeah, I mean, share with, share the video with, with a friend maybe if you think he needs, he's struggling with this. Because the idea, I mean, of this guy is so you can actually, people can actually, you know, help themselves get through the maps once they have all this knowledge. But um, yeah guys, that's, that's pretty much it, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.